welcome to the Backseat Startup Podcast, where we give unsolicited advice to strangers on the internet. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Bobby Wegner. Dr. Wegner is a clinical psychologist, a lecturer at Harvard in industrial organized psychology, an author, and she spends most of her time as the founder and CEO of Groups. Groups is a global group connection platform that helps people and organizations deepen connection and build better relationships. Dr. Wegner, thank you so much for being on the show. Great. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Luke. Um, from here, we open Reddit and we find a question posed by a founder and we break it down. Are you ready? Let's do it. I love All it. All right. Perfect. So this one is called, um, it's titled, Is This Normal? Question about managing founder relationships. And I'll just give it a quick read. Hi, all. I'm employee number one at a solo founded startup. When the founder showed me the product, I completely fell in love with it since it solved a problem that I had been confronted with many times in my own career. As I'm slowly learning more about launching startups, it turns out that the product has been built in direct, direct contravention of the typical startup rules. For example, the product has taken multiple years of development, skipping the MVP stage, and the founder, founder never, never did any customer interviews. It's in a very niche market in which we he worked for over 10 years, so he probably rightly assumes he knows the problem. Growth has been very slow, and the founder's response has always been to keep on building new features into the software instead of engaging with prospects and customers. He also refuses to track anything like customer acquisition costs, conversions on marketing campaigns, month of recurring revenue growth, number of demos per month, website visitors, etc. Basically all the metrics. And he refuses to set concrete goals in terms of revenue and conversions. His idea is that the information we have is too limited at this stage, so it wouldn't make sense to set goals. He also doesn't really believe in goal setting because there are no consequences if you miss them or make them if they're just spun out of thin air. Naturally, it would be different if we had external investors, but we don't. I respect him a lot and what he's been able to build. The product is incredible and exceeds uh, exceeds the functionalities of even the biggest players in our market. At the same time, I'm wondering if these hangups aren't preventing us from reaching out, reaching our potential as a company. I've tried talking to him about it, but he is very adamant uh, to continue running the company his way. Should I be worried? So I would love your uh, perspective on this, particularly in the kind of interpersonal relationship. How do you deal with this qu- these questions, especially when uh, they seem pretty fundamental to the future of the company? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot here, right? So I think the first thing is sort of like, what is this relationship? So at first, I thought this was kind of a co-founder relationship, but it sounds like this is employee number one. So there's a hierarchical thing at play here that kind of sets the landscape a little bit in terms of how you, there's a power dynamic in play here that might be different. But even if you have a co-founder, there still can be a power power dynamic thinking about equity splits and who's started and like lots of other things. But that's kind of like the first thing that my mind goes to. Um, And then the question that the person asks is, should I be, should I be worried? Then I'm like, okay, well, this person is clearly worried, right? Because they're asking. So, so what is, what, why are they worried? So there's a lot, like, we have to get to the bottom here of, like, what's the why behind this? Because on one hand, it sounds like they're successful, um, but there's something concerning to this person. And I'm curious, I guess, like, what that is or what that would be. So that's where my mind first goes, but how about you? Yeah, I I think that's right. Um, I think, you know, I'm kind of approaching it from, like, a employee number one usually has, you know, some degree of equity in it. And I think they're worried about the longevity of the company kind of as it uh, uh, portends to them when there's nothing being tracked. And it sounds like they don't have a ton of faith in their founder, um, which is always uh, kind of a tricky situation to be in. And um, I think you hit the nail on the head when it's it's a, a different dynamic when it's like a superior, inferior kind of relationship. So I'm curious, um, A, in this situation, how would you encourage this employee to kind of open the means of communication? And then on the flip side, how would that be different if they were more or less equal co-founders in this? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess if we even step back from the power dynamics, because we get in this no matter what teams we're on, you know, if it's a team of two or a team of 20, there's certain principles of like strong relationships. So like, for example, what we think about at groups is like, you know, how do you build deeper connection? How do you improve communication? How do you create a sense of culture, safety and belonging? And how do you understand each other's strengths to kind of come together? So the the thing I'm thinking here is like, there seems to be a fear of moving towards conversation. Like why is this person posting on Reddit versus Mm -hmm. going to have this conversation with the person? And then my next question would be like, why? Right. So is the, is this relationship strong enough 
where um, does this person feel like safe enough within this relationship to share their concerns? And if that's not the case, then maybe that's like the first place to start, you know, to like go to the, go to the, uh, the managing founder and just say, listen, like, you know, the other thing is when there's difficult conversations to be had, you always think about what's the shared goal. So you, you take it out of the personal, like, I don't, I disagree with you and say, listen, can we sit down and talk? You and I both want this company to work. Like we have given up everything to be here. I know that's true for you. I know that's true for me. And there's some things that we're doing. And I'm just wondering if like, you know, we're really going to accomplish the shared goal of X growth. And then for me, part of it is like, I'm not sure exactly how we're tracking growth and success and all these things. And that might be less important to you because you've been in this, you know, industry for 10 plus, however long, you know, but for me, it's really helpful to actually break it down because this is how I work best. So like, what do you think about that? you know, and try to like engage a conversation around it versus like, are you sure you're like a bad founder? You know, it's like all about the way you're uh, positioning it and the words you're using to convey that you're deeply committed mm -hmm. and that you two are working on the shared goal. And it's really normal to have a difference of opinion. You know, in all relationships, we talk about um, rupture and repair. So things happen, ruptures happen, different disagreements, different visions. But like the most important part is like the communication around that and we're like repair, kind of repairing it or talking about it and moving through it. And that's really where high performing, strong teams are like live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this kind of skirts the interpersonal dynamic, but the main thing that they're concerned about not tracking metrics that struck me as odd because it seems like this poster can do that on their own, you know, um, and I bet the founder would appreciate it and be like, Hey, guess what? Like we grew, you know, 10% MRR month over month. Like it's something, if that's really a, a barrier to how this poster is feeling about the future of the company, I mean, metrics are just math. I mean, you can take that and compile your own to make yourself feel better. And again, like it, it there's definitely room for improvement in terms of how you communicate that. And um, I know it can be concerning if that doesn't seem like a priority of the founder, but um, it, it is something you can do in your own right. And I, that's kind of stood out to me as I was reading this. Yeah. And see it as like a strength, right? So like for me, um, we are three full-time people and then we have a number of group guides and people on the kind of back end sort of investment side and legal side that are helping us. But like there's three of us in the day-to-day -day doing a ton of work and we, we, our values are aligned and we know what we're building, but our skill sets are quite different. Like metrics, like, sure, I'm a psychologist. I've been trained in a lot of this. It's not where my mind goes. You know, like we just sat down today and Charlotte, who's um, our VP of operations, like, okay, I'm just going through all the accounting stuff and what we're doing. And Casey's like kind of collecting data. And it's like, that is so helpful. I so value that, but that's not like where my skill set lies. Mm -hmm. And so that's really important to sort of acknowledge that as a team. Like, what can I do? Where can I help us best? And where can you help us best? And see it as like from a, like a strengths perspective rather than like what this other person's not doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it also makes me think like, you can't control other people's behavior. You can only control your own, you know? So like, what can you do here and how can you see this in a way? And then how can you move towards the relationship in honest, uh, honest conversation? And if the person's closed off to all of that, then maybe this isn't like a strong relationship. You know, if they can't hear it, then that's problematic. And that will be problematic time and time again, not just here. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And startups really reward those who kind of give themselves more hats. So like, yeah. uh, there's so much to be done in a startup and everyone has such a different set of skills. So, um, I, you know, I don't know if it's been affirmatively, um, discouraged from tracking these metrics, but, you know, take that upon yourself. Like the, this, there's plenty of work to go around and this seems like, uh, something that this poster could, uh, take upon themselves. But, um, this does, uh, lead to a question I have for you is what do you think is the best flow of feedback from the bottom up? Like, um, how, what does a healthy workplace relationship look like when there's open communication and kind of, uh, people in the lower ranks can report to their, um, superiors and officers about um, any any sort of feedback, really. Yeah. 
So this, every group functions differently, but there are certain truisms, you know, like the, the more kind of vulnerability, the more openness, the more transparency, the more direct communication, all these things are correlated with um, high performing, deeply connected groups. Um, so, you know, and uh, there's a great book called Culture Code written by Daniel Coyle that talks a lot about building a strong culture. There's a lot of, re- it's kind of like a free economics of culture and high-performing teams. Mm-hmm. Totally worth a read. We we teach on parts of it in my class. Um, but the reality is like a work relationship is, is like any relationship. It takes time and you have to invest and you have to set the contract and you want to know like what we're doing, what's comfortable for you, what's comfortable for me, what do we want this to be? We spend a third of our life at work and we know that we need to take care of our marriages and our partnerships. We know we need to like pay attention to our kids and our friends, but we don't really think about that with work relationships. And we definitely don't spend time like figuring out like, how do you like to communicate? How do I like to list like that stuff? And so what we do with groups is actually bring like a group guide in to help set up that contract in an emotional way. So like, what is your shared goal? What's the explicit goal here? Not the purpose of the company. That's way too big. Like, what are we doing here? And then what's the implicit goal? What do I want this felt experience to be like? I want to be mission driven or I want to leave early or whatever it is, but let's like talk about it. And then, um, and then figure out how we're going to communicate and then almost set like kind of relationship or cultural KPIs, Mm -hmm. like how are we going to keep ourselves accountable here to this thing that we've both agreed to, you know, but it's like couples therapy almost or something, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, There's always this joke when there's like particularly two founders, like it, it, so much of it replicates like the marriage situation (laughs) where you have to have this open um, stream of communication. You have to learn kind of these, um, these meta feelings of um, not just like the verbal things that are are being said, but how you approach them and how they're brought up in the first place. And um, so I am very glad that we have a psychologist on to break through this question, because this has been such a fascinating uh, uh, assessment of this founder's post. So uh, Dr. Regner, thank you so much for being on the show. Really uh, have enjoyed having you on. How can listeners connect with you? Great. Um, feel free to connect with me. I'm on Twitter at Dr. Bobby Wegner, D- uh, B-O-B-B-I Wegner, W-E-G-N-E-R. Um, you know, LinkedIn to Bobby Wegner, W-E-G-N-E-R. Um, can check out groups, www.joingroups with two O's.com. And yeah, Instagram, I'm, I'm on all, all the things. So I'm floating around on the the uh, internet. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) Well, once again, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, It was great meeting with you. It was great talking with you and take care. Great. Thanks so much, Luke. Thank you for watching this episode of Backseat Startup. Please like and subscribe for more. This show is brought to you by Startup Founder Daily. We feature founders across our platforms for free. If you'd like to apply, head to the application form in the show notes.